amazing research happening on the campus of the University of Saskatchewan. Vito Intervag is made up of research team that has been working on a vaccine for COVID-19 for not just, we can't say years, that's normal for a vaccine. We're talking kind of like for weeks, just like all the other teams as well. Here's a scene from uh, Vito Intervac, and this is where they're located on the campus of the U of S. But the folks here are part of dozens of research teams, credible teams from around the world, and they're really racing against time to come up with that critical, magical vaccine. So let's now connect with Dr. Volker, Volker Gertz. He's director and CEO of Vito Interact, and he joins us live from Saskatoon. Dr. Gertz, welcome to the program. Thanks for having me. And thank you for joining us. Um, I think people want to know right off the top here, what's the latest on your research? What's going on right now? So it's uh, really exciting, actually. So we're, we're just entering now the last phase, which is called toxicology. Um, that is the last step before we start in our clinical trials. Um, so those are activities are now happening in October and November. And then if everything goes well, we're ready to start right away into a phase one and phase two trial. What are you seeing in the toxicology that encourages you right now? So the toxicology is, is a, a study that is um, needed by the regulators to demonstrate that the vaccine is completely safe. So when we inject the vaccine into animals, we then look at all the different organs and we see if there is any adverse events, uh, any, any unwanted reactions to the in, in the organs to the vaccine. And that is a requirement that is, um, you know, the discussion right now on the vaccine and how safe it is, that is something that is very, very important to do. And so if, if all goes well and you're hoping that it will, what can you give us an example of what would be the exact next stage? What would happen for us to understand here at home? Yeah, so when you make a vaccine, you have to um, go through various phases. And I'm sure we all have seen this in the news. Initially, it's just a discovery research. Then you start manufacturing the vaccine. And then uh, once you have clinical grade material that is ready to go into human testing, uh, you have to demonstrate in these toxicology studies that it's completely safe to go into humans. And that's where we are right now. Once we have cleared that hurdle, we can go into these human clinical trials. And then as many of these other vaccines go through them, so there's a phase one, phase two, and phase three trial. And after that, the vaccine could become available to the public. When you talk about human clinical trial, what are the biggest challenges in getting over that hurdle? So again, it's all about safety. So, you know, um, again, nobody right now wants to cut any corners. We want to make sure that all vaccines that are going forward right now are safe. And so the regulator has some really, really strict guidelines in, you know, what kind of material can go into these humans? Um, what, do we, what do we need to see there? Um, we can't have any unwanted reactions to it and so on. So it's, it has to be completely safe to, to go into humans. And so that's um, the biggest hurdle to make it over. However, our vaccine, we have um, chosen a technology that has an excellent safety profile. It's a proven record technology. It's not like some of these others that are going forward right now that haven't been in humans yet. Ours has, and there's many, many vaccines in humans that are uh, using the same technology as we are right now. So we know that our vaccine is very safe. We'll just have to demonstrate it. And then once again, once we have that uh, hurdle cleared, we can um, then apply for a clinical trial and, and then start our clinical trials in December. You talked about some trials that, that have, have gone further ahead but not been tested on humans and you're, you're, you're uh, concerned about that. What exactly are you worried about that? Because I'm sure a lot of people have read about the trials in Russia, the, the vaccine research in China, for example, that's being fast, fast track, so to speak. What do you make of that? Well, so what we're seeing right now around the world is um, over 140 different vaccine candidates going forward. And there are, many of them are using different technologies. Some are using proven technologies, and some of them are using very, very new technologies, which, you know, in experimental studies have worked really well. And so scientifically, I think there, there are great vaccines, great technologies to go forward, but they haven't really been in humans yet. And so we don't know how well they will work in the context of the COVID-19. And that is something that now we're finding out in these uh, so-called phase three studies, 
when you actually take the vaccine out there in the field and then see how well it works. Well, there is a one giant company, Pfizer. I think most Canadians know what we're talking about. They're testing a COVID-19 vaccine on people right now. And they're saying, if the media report is correct, that they're going to have conclusive data by the end of October. Um, what do you make of that? Well, again, um, I think there is so much uh, media hype and politics involved right now. I mean, these trials are going on, and and if everything goes well, then then some of these studies will be completed before the end of the year. And so then um, if the data is all convincing and looks good, we might see that um, the first two or three vaccines will be approved and will become available early next year. Well, we're still looking at But again, it, because, it, it really depends... Yes, it ahead. really depends on the outcome from these trials. How, um, looking down the road, let's be optimistic, and, and we're, we're in the, the human trials now, what challenge would there be to even find people, whether from Saskatchewan or elsewhere in Canada, to take part in this? So, I mean, it, it's a fantastic story for us. We have had people from all over Canada contacting us and wanting to be part of the trials. Um, I don't think it will be any um, problem to find volunteers um, to start with our phase one and phase two trials. Um, those studies will be done in Halifax at Dalhousie University um, at the Canadian Centre for Vaccinology. And, and they, it's, it's probably the country's leading group there to do um, these uh, clinical trials. I think the bigger issue in the long term will be that we're seeing a lot of vaccine hesitancy out there. Um, you know, having these vaccines then and, and only 60% of the public or maybe 70% of them using these vaccines. And, um, you know, that, that's not good in, 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 in that we don't get much herd immunity then. So we're not really, um, you know, the virus if, if many people refuse to take the vaccine. And what do you think is the reason for, for that high number of people refusing to even consider taking a vaccine when and if it comes out? I think um, information and misinformation out there, um, people don't know who to trust and not to trust. And, uh, you know, what, what um, you know, what, um, what information really speaks to, um, you know, how well these vaccines will work and what is uh, just made up and so on. So there is a lot of issues out there. And again, I think what we're seeing is as long as people, um, you know, trust the scientific um, data, the real data that's coming out and showing how well these vaccines work. I think that's the best advice for everyone. What would happen to your research, Dr. Gertz, if, say, one or two, let's say, credible uh, uh, pharmaceutical companies come out with a COVID-19 vaccine uh, and it's out there? What would happen to, to what you're doing? Nothing. It's really good, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm a big, um, um, you know, big supporter of all these different vaccine technologies going forward. I, th I think it's um, very important that we have so many different vaccines going forward, that we have um, different technologies. As I said before, we don't know how well some of these technologies work. Um, some of these vaccines are also very difficult to manufacture. And so it's actually good to have different technologies going forward. Um, they might be more cost effective, they might be easier to manufacture. So it's, it's good for the country, it's good for the world to have as many vaccines as possible going forward right now. So give us a ballpark before we wrap things up here. What do you think would be a reasonable timeline to see a COVID-19 vaccine out there for millions of people to take? Spring next year. I think uh, we will be seeing um, the first technologies, as you said, um, and, um, coming becoming available by the end of the year, or maybe very early next year, they will then become available to targeted populations first, um, those that are in, in, in urgent need for a vaccine. And then for the general public, I think it will be spring to summer of next year. Dr. Gertz, thank you so much for talking with us and taking time. Away. This is your personal time, so I really appreciate you doing this for us. Thank you so much and all the best with your research. Thank you very much.